हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम गुड मॉर्निंग खुशामदी जी आया नु हु यू मोरख बखैर आगले नी हाउ चुने शमे वशमल है और हाय गुजाइमर्स गुड मॉर्गन ओला बो योर प्रीवियस कई फहर हाल है शमा चतोरे आलन मसालन मरहबा बूना एंड अ वेरी अमेजिंग गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीबॉडी हु इज ट्यून इनटू पीटीवी वर्ल्ड एंड वाचिंग वर्ल्ड दिस मॉर्निंग अलोंग विद द वेरी अमेजिंग द वेरी टैलेंटेड Shahzad Khan and Shida Hashmi. Hello, Shida. How are you today? I am absolutely great. How are you? And so energetic. I am absolutely perfect. I think I'm getting better because somebody uh, there was a doctor on the show yesterday, okay. or I think day before yesterday too, as well. And he said that you actually need to take your vitamins, and then you will feel great. Right. And so that's something which I never did, but I still feel great too, as well. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, since it's winter, so there's a lot of vitamin uh, deficiency going on. Especially if we talk about vitamin D too. Hmm. So, and all of those people who actually uh, are very prone to get these viruses hmm. is because of the fact that they have vitamin deficiencies in their body and they yeah. don't get it checked up. Hmm. So, I think this is where we wanted to start today. That we want everybody to be healthy, yeah. everybody to be smiling and chirpy. And other than you know, obviously there are different cases. People who are married. can't we cannot help them to be happy so you have to be happy by Shazad your own self too as well shazad and false perceptions of happy marriages <laughs> but anyway you know just i i guess two days before we had a new nutritionist over yeah. and she mentioned that you have to avoid red meat in winter and so i sort of implemented this at my place and i told everyone not to buy red meat and we've been having fish ever since so well yeah. that's great <laughs> and i think that's what i'm doing too as well but that's not like a very realistic idea i mean okay. imagine think about your father's pocket too as well you know bring in in fish every day he loves fish he wouldn't mind oh, okay that's great but that's <laughs> not what i'm saying but yeah. i think that you know for all of those people who are nutritionists mm-hmm. dietitians should actually be keeping in in their head or keeping in view that the type of finances anybody yeah. who might probably be coming mm-hmm. for advice will be able to pay so i think this and is something that we need to figure out and i remember asking the nutritionist that and she said that those who cannot afford to buy fish on a daily basis or you know more yeah. often then they should probably opt for sun uh, opt for sunflower seeds yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and ladies and things. gentlemen you know there are a lot of vegetables which are sources of protein too yeah. and then seeds too as well so please make sure that you look after yourself because i think that you know when whenever we talk about children going to school whenever we talk about our own selves If you're not healthy, I don't think that we can actually compete in life. You know that too, and also I feel like uh, lately a lot of children, because they're a uh, house mouse, we call them. They're always on their phones or their tabs or laptops, what not. So they don't even have enough energies to go out and play sports. I mean, yeah. I remember in my school and colleges, whenever I was in my school and college, we used to play a lot of sports. I was my uh, netball team. And that captain. was almost ten years ago, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, fifteen years. <laughs> no, but uh, but seriously, I was my uh, netball team captain, and I enjoyed playing. I was. not very good netball is not even a game you stand you pass the ball that. and you throw the ball into the bucket that's it basketball is a game i also played basketball i was bad at it though really yeah. okay but it's all right you know <laughs> so so it, it was all about sports so what did you play okay so i played basketball i played polo and yes that's it okay pretty much polo and as well yeah yeah these are the two sports which i played but basketball i went on to you know probably uh, competing with higher education commission matches oh, and wow. all of that and then federal board So I was a part of that, and mm. I used to blog because I was tall enough. Oh. It was great. <laughs> Lucky. But other than that, mm. uh, I think this is, ladies and gentlemen, what we have picked up on. I yeah. think what a beautiful morning it is. So smooth today, early in the morning. So Asha. today we have we have picked up on sports, ladies and gentlemen. Pakistan, as we all say, I know that a lot of people who do not play cricket will probably mind this <laughs> me saying it, but we are a cricketing nation. Yeah. And and uh, I don't think that anybody is going to disagree to that too. As and well. we're so but, sentimental about it. Yeah. And our national sport is hockey. So imagine what kind of a state of mind we are probably <laughs> in playing uh, playing cricket, but national sport is hockey. Well, why didn't we even pick up on ho- uh, cricket then? I don't. Uh, this is something which I do not understand. Well, I don't as well. But you know, a lot of people can sort of connect to it. I'm not sure why. And the Pakistan India match is something that yeah. everyone waits for. So that is probably one of the reasons that people actually look, uh, you know, forward towards cricket. Exactly. And. Um, Ex- especially when our prime minister has been an ex cricketer as well yeah. we are actually looking forward to you know having a very flourished sports industry not only in cricket but as well as other sports like squash yeah yeah we, we, that that's where we were coming ladies and gentlemen and you know to be honest for example you you mentioned about squash so i'm going to give a brief history yeah. so ladies and gentlemen what we have done today is that we've actually called in somebody whom we think that we really need to celebrate yes because back in pakistan. 1970s 80s i think he was the one who actually brought in a lot of pride to pakistan yeah, absolutely. wherever he went whether it was in <coughs> england whether he was in germany or anywhere so and you know i just wanted to give a brief history of how squash came into being so yeah. 
uh, I think somewhere around in the 16th century, the okay. rackets were existent yeah. because people used to play lawn tennis. Okay. So then by 18th century, squash actually came into being where there was a, this squeezed ball which they used to throw alongside hmm. the ball and then play with it. So that's how squash came okay. into being and then we have names like Kamar Zaman, we have names like Jangir Khan and, and you know so on and so forth too. But now, ladies and gentlemen, if we see that the kind of affairs we have in probably mm. Pakistan Sports Board, I'm sorry that I actually have to name that, but I have to be honest with my job too. I think that the things have deteriorated quite a lot mm -hmm. because earlier, mm -hmm. you know, we were champions in hockey too. If we talk about yes. cricket, we were champions in squash too. Every other karate, every other sport we used to play yeah. back in 70s and 80s, mm. I, we, we were good at it. Yeah. So what happened, what went wrong and how do you think that we can give proper attention to each and every sport yeah. is very important as a nation too. And that is actually what we're talking about today, you know, other than, us, you know, the squash player that we just mentioned you, we will reveal in a bit that we have with us. We also have a sports analyst and a sports journalist. So I want to talk about the ethics that goes into, you know, reporting sports. So I am very excited about that. Yeah, and, and you know, thank you very much, uh, in, in fact, for uh, pointing or highlighting this out too as well, because a lot of times I think, uh, I'm sorry to say that, but sports journalists do not even do a great job because I've seen people because I've, uh, been on the sports channels too as okay. well. I've done a lot of shows. So what I've done myself is that I've figured it out that a lot of times I've seen a sports journalist favoring other people yeah, or other yeah. sportsmen. True. So, and I think that this is exactly not right because of the fact that, you know, for example, when I was doing this under 16 camps and I was covering it, yeah. so I could see that there was this guy who was a journalist and he wanted his son to get selected in the under 16s. Mm. So what he did himself was taking picture of all the selectors, <clears throat> putting them in the magazine so that their kid can actually get into that too. Okay. So I think this is something which is very different, well, this is something which we yes. do not actually want. But then at the same time, you know, since our producer is not ready to listen to what we are saying today, so we're we have got a picture important. and we want everybody to guess who is with us today. So, ladies and gentlemen, he's a legendary human being making Pakistan proud ever since he was born. I think that's that's how I'm going to put it too. <laughs> and we, we, I, it's a question for you. If you can call in, I think 9206541 is the number. Let us know before we actually let you yeah. know that who is with us. <laughs> because we can't wait to actually so, so start So ladies and gentlemen, he won his junior championship in 1968. Then he went on to play the British Open. But before British Open, he was, I think, in the British Amateur Cup too as well. Mm. Then British Open, 1975, yeah. he defeated Hunt. <laughs> and then he kept on playing till 1989. And he yes. made Pakistan proud. And he's none other than Mr. Kamar Zaman. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you for joining that. us, Thank sir. You. Thank you very much for coming over. It's it's a moment Our of pleasure, sir. Uh, it's a moment of pride for all of us Absolutely. to have you over here, and I think it is very important uh, for us yes. as kids to actually highlight our unsung heroes too, as well. Because Absolutely. back in 1970s and 80s, I think you right. you were the game. Yes. Yes. Now I think we really need to reiterate because uh, 30th of October there was this article in the newspaper where you said, "I'm ready to serve Pakistan." So, before I ask any question, I think I'm going to introduce our other guest too as well. So, alongside Mr. Kamar Zaman, the gentleman who actually wrote this article on the 30th or 31st of October is with us too. He's an international sports journalist. He's none other than Mr. Ajaz Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Wa alaikum, sir. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And this you. gentleman came all the way from Peshawar just for our show. So, we thank you very exactly. much for doing so, this. So, Taasira Minakum De Pira. That, that, <laughs> that's all I can say. So I was actually trying to tell them that I love you. Well, but I, I just know Rashid. But last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, this, uh, this amazing gentleman, I met him probably four, four and a half years ago. He was, he, I, I could see in his eyes that he was very dedicated and motivated to achieve something of his own. Yeah. Even though coming from a very amazing background, he wanted to do something on his own yeah. and probably for his own self too as well. So he came down as a news anchor, making his way to probably doing a lot of entertainment shows and then finally finding his forte in yeah. sports. And he's a sports journalist, a good one. We rely on him every time whenever there is a series. Absolutely. I think he's the one you see him on PTV World 2 as well. He's none other than Mr. Ahmed Nawaz. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Assalamu I'm sleepy. <laughs> it's, it's perfectly all right. You know, people are usually sleepy early in the morning. Yeah. It's our job to wake you up. Yeah. So. But I still remember because you said four years back, I remember you walking through that corridor yeah, with yeah. me. We used to have our breakfast at 8 and then we thought it's hard getting up at exactly. this time. And I always thought I was better than you. But now I think times have changed now. You're more punctual. 
no, no, I, I, I don't think that it's about better or not better, but I think knowing what our forte is, yeah. is something which gives me contentment and will, it will give you contentment too. We'll talk about it after the show. Uh, I, I, <laughs> mentioned, I mentioned waking up. Part yeah, yeah. yeah, waking up is good. So yeah. waking up is my forte, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, because I've been doing it. But so, now, let yeah. me get the conversation started. So, Kamar Saab, you, you have been a champion, you're a champion of hearts and whatnot. But this statement coming, so you retired in 1989, in 2018, October 30th, you decided to serve Pakistan. What took you so long to realize that you are an asset and you can probably help other people to become an asset? Hmm. Thank you very much, Sharad. You see, um, the, as you say, the journalist, Mr. Jaz, uh, he's also involved in squash. He has a lot of... Uh, um, I told him, I told him that uh, even then, uh, these things I have uh, mentioned many times in my interviews, TV interviews, Sir. talk shows, but uh, now I think you have just read about, uh, that was about last month. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, what, what I have in my mind, I visited Australia when I retired. Yeah. Jeff Hunt, he invites me there and he, they asked me, I should visit to their sports institutes. Yeah. I visited in Adelaide, the yeah. sports institutes, about three, four hours, and they have given me a topic that I should uh, speak uh, for their uh, sportsmen. Hmm. Okay. That why Pakistan have produced so many world champion. Hmm. Reason. Reason. So when I visited there, that was my first time that I visit. I'm visiting a sports institutes. Yeah. Then I have a chance, I got a chance in Korea. When I went to Korea, I visited there. When I went to China, I visited. I was very keen because <coughs> it is not only squash. Hmm. When I was in school, I used to play hockey. Okay. I used to play cricket, but my father was very against me that don't play cricket, <laughs> you will injure yourself. Okay. I was an athlete, badminton player, tennis. I was a Pakistan junior number two. Okay. in tennis see mm. so i like sports and i made my teams mm. in peshawar i made kamar 11 football i made hockey team the two teams and i was sponsoring those teams wow, wow. Nice. see wow. so i have an idea because 19 years of my life i I've, I've been traveling around the world yeah. around the world <clears throat> i have some experience and i wanted to give that experience to my uh, youngsters, youngsters. Yeah. right when I saw that a cricketer, Imran Khan, a sportsman, he becomes a prime minister of this country. Mm. So I thought I will send my message through the newspaper, yeah. through the media that I am here to serve my country, but you have to, it is not that I am going to beg them, mm. okay. yeah, please take my services. Right. So they knows, he knows it, everybody knows it. Yeah, yeah. See. So what experience I have, I wanted to give to them, okay. especially squash, which I was, which which I'm already already I'm, I'm doing it. See? Do you still play? I still play wow. squash. I play with the childrens, wow. young childrens. I like to play with senior boys, but it's difficult for me because I'm, I'm I, I know if I, I once I enter in the court and I try, then I wanted to beat them, <laughs> but I will injure myself. <laughs> then I will injure exactly. myself. So I play with youngsters about. 10, 12, 13 year old boys, hmm. they are young and they give me easy balls yeah. and I, I, I just give them difficult balls. I think we can play I because I've enjoy. never ever played squash. Yes. Wow. yes so, and so, you can beat me too. Of course. I'll be of happy. Course, <laughs> of, course, of course. So this is the reason that I have said that I wanted to serve my country yes. provided they need my expertity. Of I've course, great do, sir. Well, well, that's a great initiative, of course. Now, moving on to Mr. Ajaz. Sir, as we just discussed that it takes quite a lot of time to actually decide what your niche is. So when was it that you decided, I want to be a sports journalist? Were you, like, always a sports fan? Uh, actually, I've been to uh, sports in a very early age because of my father. Okay. My father supported me. He was an army officer. Okay. So uh, he actually uh, put us uh, in, the, in, in different clubs there was army clubs right. garrison club in lahore yeah. <coughs> uh, we used to go there 
So I uh, first uh, uh, choose hockey as a game. Okay. Uh, I've been to hockey. I played uh, five international matches. Wow. wow. Uh, I represented uh, as uh, uh, Shahzad said uh, the uh, UGC at that time. There was University Grant Commission yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, team. Uh, uh, I was the captain of uh, the Garrison team, Lahore Garrison. Okay. Uh, <coughs> won almost uh, uh, the cup after fo fourteen years. Wow. Uh, I, uh, at that time, uh, uh, I was in seventh class. Hmm. Uh, f from that onward, uh, I joined uh, Islamic College, uh, Peshawar. Okay. Uh, become a captain of the Islamic College, and then uh, the captain of the university team. Hmm. Wow. So, uh, captain of the UGC team wow. as well. Hmm. So, uh, m my passion with the sports started right from the uh, start, and hmm. uh, uh, that that was actually hmm. the reason. I join uh, uh, sports journalism right. to be in the field. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, if if you play and you out uh, from the field, so th th yeah. that was the uh, main thing uh, that I uh, choose uh, the exactly. sports journalism field right. and uh, started uh, write up. But uh, before that, hmm. I did my master in mass communication okay. and journalism. Wow! And after that, uh, to, to for my own, hmm. uh, I also did my MSc in sports sciences as well. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm a teacher as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. There are a lot of things. Well, let's say wow. you're just an all-rounder. Uh, uh, yes, awesome. <laughs> yes. So, uh, uh, being a, a sports reporter, obviously, uh, uh, one has to know about uh, the sports especially. Yes, uh, my colleague uh, is with me. Uh, he's agree uh, that if... if if you have knowledge of hockey, hmm. if you have knowledge of squash, there are different terminologies using in all. Hmm. Uh, if, uh, if you you are attached with the print media, actually, right. Yeah. Right. so the terminologies are different. For obviously. example, uh, would you mind sharing different a few terms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh, you know, uh, in football, you can uh, uh, mention strikers. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. There are strikers. Hmm. The forwards. They are uh, yeah, in forwards. Strikers. In hockey, there are forwards. In the, uh, the football, there are strikers. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, a, a exactly. different thing between. Hmm. So uh, uh, and the f uh, thing is, uh, when you file your story, obviously, you know uh, who's the forward line, the midfielder, and obviously the deep defender. Hmm. So it totally changed. There was a full back, uh, the half line, okay. hmm. and the forwards. So right. it's a difference between football and hockey. Hmm. So, yeah. so uh, a journalist must be, uh, you know, aware of these uh, terminologies. Hmm. And if he files story, obviously it catch uh, the reader. I think this is what yeah. I'm going to ask Shizar too yeah. as well. What yeah. did you get from fall back or half back? And I, even I don't know about it because <laughs> I have never ever played hockey. So what you about know, you? So um, I don't know, but I, I think have the only story. the only thing I can follow by is striker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but let me move on to. Uh, yeah, Dabas. it's actually about him. So when I came here, so uh, you know, he actually helped me a lot to train me in reading news and everything He's because I started guy. as a news anchor. So one day I was reading sports news and he goes like, "Oh, do you want to be sports? Like, do you want to host sports shows? Tell me about it. Do something." Like he asked me questions and everything and I was so dumb at it he was like you know what leave it I'm gonna do it myself and, and he knew I was not made for it so people who actually are interested in sports are the only ones um, who know how to do it so you've been doing this show for two years now I yeah, guess more than two years more than two years now and uh, you've also have you been playing as well before that yeah uh, like uh, the legends who are here one is obviously a squash legend one is a legendary uh, sports journalist and yeah. now about to become a legendary father of a legendary uh, squash yes. yeah, yeah, a young yeah. squash player as well um, I was always outside uh, I even remember my um, uh, schools and colleges university I was always in the grounds I remember my one of my teachers saying that uh, I don't think he's he's gonna ever come in my class because mm. he's always playing cricket or football right so um, I was generally one of those uh, people who enjoyed sports more than anything in the world mm. and um, I, I think I was lucky enough to be from one of those last generations who actually continued this because after obviously our generation we saw people going towards gadgets and everything right uh, so I think that's from where the passion came in from but uh, more than that I, I didn't want to restrict myself to one sport hmm. so I, I love playing hockey I mm -hmm. love playing cricket um, I love playing football as well I was in badminton uh, athletics was not one of my yeah. strong points because I never understood all of those technicalities <laughs> okay. but um, other than that so you I love playing games right yeah absolutely so i think from that's from where the passion came in from 
but uh, obviously like i said i didn't want to be restricted to one sport as well uh, so i wanted to learn about each and everything i kept on studying like even last year um, we came up with a very new sport that's not in pakistan that's called australian football okay. so i started researching about that i wanted to know what ah, it is is it any different than football what yeah, is it yeah, 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 <laughs> it's completely okay. it, this is what shiza means when is, she is says it different from american football yes absolutely okay. yeah. football uh, it's it's a safer be, right? version it's a safer version okay. Okay. for kids and i'm oh, yeah, sure yeah, yeah. when sir went to australia i got it i got it with the kit and everything yeah. okay. okay but now this is not what i'm asking you 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 made a very valid point and i think i've picked up on it too as well and that is that you said that when you were a kid you know you used to play all kinds of support or uh, uh, sports now as a matter of fact i think when we were kids on television on print media everywhere i mean whatever sources of marketing we had mm. i think we had equal distribution towards each and every sport yes made be cricket made be hockey made be squash made be jav javelin throw or whatever we call it but now what i see is that you know since you are a sports journalist i think majority of your shows are about cricket too mm. yeah mm. so and so what i want to ask is and probably you, because you are a newscaster too so whenever i see you reading news i think it's probably about cricket too because mm -hmm. a lot of matches are taking place i think today it's new zealand pakistan yeah the first one yeah yeah it's first one too as well so now don't you go back and tell your people at the desk that you know why is it just only cricket why cannot we even share news about other sports well, I, i'll be very honest in this i have countless times ended up having a conflict of okay. interest in this because oh. i have always told them that uh you can lead with cricket but obviously if, for example our show is called sports extra hmm. so that entire the uh, you know it has the entire spectrum of sports we can't hmm. restrict it to cricket yeah. okay. same is the case with news we're obviously um, a cricket dominating society like you mentioned and unfortunately because of that a lot of sports are lacking like for example i have to um, actually tell them uh, some of our sports desk editors are very good they give us information on football they've got the german league in perspective mm. tennis is very favored in ptv yeah. world i know that for sure mm. so i think in the news it's perfectly fine mm. but it, when when it comes to programming so I, i think that's a part where we're lacking behind yeah, but, but that's also you've, you've had boxers and athletes so on your show as well yeah, so i guess yeah. we do that but coming back to you mr kamar zaman i i see how true you are to your passion you're also wearing a brooch with a squash uh, racket yes, as well right. always <laughs> but yeah. i want you to so recall the victory <laughs> well i want you to recall the time you were actually a world champion how does victory taste like and how was it when you came back Whoa. how were you welcomed in everything oh well of course see when i went uh, play it, it was at wembley center squash center hmm. they used to play before the year that uh, 73 72 they used to play in sheffield okay then they made new arena okay. yeah. at wembley squash center and i went there i played i beat jeff hunt there and that was the longest match of the history oh wow how long was Two it 2 hour and 17 minutes 9 1 9 7 and 9 7 in the fifth game yeah, yeah. oh wow 9 <laughs> 7 in the fifth game yeah. see Jeff was number one. Yeah. Jeff was number one. I was seeded eight. Okay. Number two seeded but can he score? Okay. Three Camden Carew, fourth Gogi Lawadin, hmm. fifth Hidi Jahan, and then uh, about like like that. Right. So uh, the time Rex Bellamy have interviewed Jeff, and he told him that Jeff, I hope you're going to win the British Open. Hmm. He said yes. If you don't win, who you will second? Right. Jeff said, "I will second Kenny. Okay. Can he score?" Okay. He said, "Who you rate third?" He said, "Third will be Camden Caro." Hmm. Then Gogi. Hmm. You have played matches with Gogi along yes. with Sab too as well. Then, yeah. then uh, Hidi. Okay. And he said, because I was Stoke players, okay. I was Stoke players. My game was hundred totally different than. Hmm. those are players okay why difference that i will tell you okay and uh, he said what about this mr zaman oh we can handle him okay. we can handle him because he is stoker so we can handle he said we can handle him that's he said he underestimated you definitely he underestimated <laughs> i beat him when, when i beat him two hour and seven it was quarter final okay i played quarter final because he once he did i was eight seeded okay yeah. so one and eight they used to play at that time draw okay i beat him and after that they interviewed him again <laughs> okay and when they went to change room and they asked him what about and he say i'm shattered i please uh, let me take some time <laughs> right. and then i will tell you hmm 
see he was not even able to talk not able to talk it was the longest match mm, he right. was fit man and uh, i was uh, even then see if i i have run on the court maybe 5 mile jeff have run 20 miles right, because of right, my game right i was placing ball drop shots nick side walls and jeff was retriever but he was very fit okay he was very fit and i i won that championship semi final i won final was with gogi lawdin okay and everybody was everybody was coming gogi mubarak shah mubarak ho mubarak ho mubarak everybody is uh, giving mubarak to gogi lawdin huh. and i am i am watching them they they knew that gogi will beat mr zaman right right straight away because gogi was much better player mm. i beat him 3-0 oh wow in the final i beat him 3-0 wow and in that final i had only 3 tens okay Three tens and thirty-six winners. Thirty-six winners. See, mm. I didn't make him run. All balls was going to finish because Gogi game was a different game. He was lopping, mm. and I was killing that ball. When I won the that British Open, yeah, first time. You believe me? I didn't. I I didn't understand what's what, <laughs> what's happening. You know, I was just moving in the court, and the. St- uh, Pakistani students, they because I I was living at a hostel, Pakistan oh, hostel. Oh, okay. Believe, yeah, they came with me about twenty twenty five boys were there. They they ran away in the court, and Pakistan were losing this title for the last thirteen year. Hmm. And I won it after thirteen year back to, at, and then uh, national anthem. Right. When national anthems start, everybody standing. The hmm. British, are Australian, they're standing, and I just. that scenes you know i can't i cannot forget wow that national anthem is there and i'm i'm thinking oh my god this is i want it and the pakistani flag is you know you know the shine in your eyes is actually telling yeah, me that you can you can man. see it in your head yeah. once again too as well but we definitely have to go out for a short break but yeah. before we go out towards the short break i'm just going to leave leave you with a thought so that when we come back you can answer that yeah. and that is that whenever we talk about any sports obviously we have to go down to the grassroots level especially talking about squash hockey departments and all of these how were they back in 1970s and then how are they now i think this is something which i'm going to ask all of you hmm. so please prepare your versions while we head out towards a short break ladies Stay and gentlemen tuned. don't go anywhere we'll be right back good morning good morning it's a good day Welcome back to World this morning ladies and gentlemen today is a beautiful day and we're talking about sports and we're sharing all the amazing amazing stories that our legendary Mr Kamar Zaman shared with us and also we have some journalists and analysts who are talking about sports and how things go down on the Pakistani sports front Exactly and thank you very much Shiza for saying that you know we are sharing amazing and wonderful stories from the past too as well and from the past we have picked up a video too ladies and gentlemen which is which is a match in between John Sher uh, uh, Saab and Jangir uh, Khan Saab too as well and i think these were two very legendary players yes. back in the time if you talk about squash i think these were the two names because i said retired in 1989 i was born in 87 so probably i think i can follow those two gen- gentlemen better <laughs> so we have taken out a clip just to get a little just to get you nostalgic so let's go ahead and take a look let's take a look yeah
All right, ladies and gentlemen, these were two Pakistani legends from Squash, obviously playing and probably reminiscing uh, or probably remembering about the time when they actually used to play in the courts too as well. But it was just to get you, get your minds fresh yeah. so that, that you know that these people still exist. If you need any kind of help, assistant, assistance, we can definitely do that. Sorry for this much touching early in the morning. <laughs> but coming down to my point, Sir Ajasa. Yeah. And that point was that whenever we talk about any sport, for example, you know, uh, Sir mentioned about Australia and mm -hmm. the academies he went to. Mm -hmm. I think every country in the world looks forward or looks up to Australia and the type of mechanisms they have developed in terms of sports and then how they figure out that, you know, who's going to play, when and so, so all of this is decided. So now when we talk about Pakistan, I want to have a little comparison in between the mm -hmm. times when it was 1970s and 80s and the sports were booming till the time when it was 2018 and then there was terrorism and there were so many other things, yeah. how the departments played their roles, how was it on grassroots level? Uh, you know, I also visited, uh, recently I visited uh, the Commonwealth Games, I covered the Commonwealth Games for Pakistan, for the Associated Press of Pakistan especially, uh, to the Asian Games, uh, to the Olympic uh, and all. You know, they, uh, in other countries, uh, there were uh, proper system, proper mechanism, proper planning in all fields, hmm. not uh, just squash uh, for other games as well. I've been to uh, uh, Holland uh, for the World Cup. There was almost uh, 4,000 players involved at a grassroots level in the age of eight hmm. for hockey. And one day they specified during the, that World Cup, they specified uh, a day for the children. And we have your pictures uh, from international tours. Yeah. You so, look like an elder brother of Ronaldo probably <laughs> <laughs> when he had long hair back yeah, in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We also uh, call it, him Britisher. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, because of uh, recently I've been to uh, Jeddah for the international conference wow. as well. Mm -hmm. So, that's why I had my Umrah there. And, uh, but coming back to uh, my uh, question. Uh, the, yeah. the question is, you know, we, uh, we were uh, world champion in four games. Yeah. Hockey, snooker, squash, and cricket. Yes. But uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, about squash, 37 year Pakistan ruled in squash. Wow. The long history. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Jangir won uh, triple five matches, uh, uh, 555 55. matches. Mm. Janshir, uh, 99 matches. Kamar, almost uh, 11 time uh, world number two. Yeah. Wow. It was actually their own efforts. Hmm, Where were the people associated with that game in these days? Okay. What was the planning at that time? So let Either me just, they, let, they let me just ask you quickly. Uh, so, so, so you becoming a champion was your your own effort, your own hard work, or were there departments in place? Were there training hmm. places where you could actually go and train, or you did it all by yourself? Well, uh, I will tell you. When I started playing squash, yeah, mm -hmm. I was about seven, eight year old. Yeah. My father was squash coach. My, uh, like Hashim Khan, my uncle was you know, Aftab Javed. He was a world amateur champion that time. And uh, my father was a coach and he was getting about 150 rupees his salary yeah. worth. And we were 11 brothers and sisters. Oh, sure. My father told me, well, if I buy you a two rupee, uh, the ball was priced at that time two rupees. Hmm. He said, "If I buy a ball every day, two rupees for you, what will I? Uh, how can I feed your uh, brother and sisters?" Hmm. I said, ba "Baba, don't worry, don't worry." I used to collect the ball, uh, burst ball from the officers they were playing, okay. and I used to tape that. I used to play with those ball. Wow. No, none facilities that time. So no that means facilities. Hmm. So, so, so that means that nothing has changed so far. So the thing. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, you know, we ruled, Pakistan ruled for 37 years. Yeah. But where were the people? We were sleeping for 37 years. <coughs> Why we uh, beaten almost all countries? Yeah. We produced seven world champions. They, they, uh, they have their titles. Mm. They I have they their hard work. Champions, you know? You know? Yeah. Yes, yes, obviously. Uh, you know, uh, what about snooker? The, we talk about uh, hockey. Yeah. Pakistan created a record of winning World Cup mm. so far intact. Yeah. Uh, but you know, nowadays our, uh, the, the Pakistan Hockey Federation is just uh, uh, having nothing, mm. uh, uh, not a single penny to hold camp for the 
World Cup for the coming World Cup in India. Wow. So, uh, you know, the situation is so alarming. Uh, in, in, for that, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, the sports. Obviously, you have to be more, uh, uh, you know, uh, in in a, in term of planning, in term of system. Mm. Uh, the Pakistan Sports Board, uh, actually, the Pakistan Sports Board uh, work is to produce nursery, mm. yeah. but they are holding uh, activities. Right. They spend almost uh, uh, thirteen to fourteen crore rupees on two. Uh, uh, games hmm. uh, on the youth games right. why they are spending money on that right. because their main charter is to produce nursery at a grassroots level in our games hmm. you know, so either so the pakistan so sport board is working on that that's how you can do it because if yeah. you're not going to hold matches in uh -huh. games uh -huh. i don't think that you uh -huh. can actually produce so i'm going to come back to you sir okay. but i really need to move on to ahmed over here so yeah. ahmed now what i think and what i believe is that people who've actually been holding the desk or the chair in Pakistan sports board or everywhere else, I think probably need a little bit of education. I mean, because Ajaz Sab over here did his mass communication, then he did his other, you know, whatever yes. his interest was. You you just talked about Australian football. You started studying about it yourself. Do you think that this will help people coming from educated backgrounds and they by themselves know a little bit of sports and how to actually go about it? It, it definitely would, but uh, my apologies to both of these seniors. I think. Uh, one thing we should understand, I think one of the reasons why squash sustained some of that um, ironic pressure that was in every sports is because obviously the Air Force took it under it, its domain yeah. mm -hmm. and it, it was being he obviously headed by them. So I think that's one of the reasons that they attached it with themselves and they thought that this is obviously an identity. Uh, if you talk about other sports and you talk about education as well, there are some very certified people on some very key positions in Pakistan right now. Unfortunately, even they're not producing results. Look, it's not the problem with, it is important. It's imperatively important. But the entire structure, and I think sir would agree, the entire mm -hmm. structure, because uh, the, day, the day before today, I, I'll, I'll be very honest, I think 90% of people out there did not know what the PSV was for. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned a very important point, that it was actually created to get out players from grassroots levels and policies. You mentioned a very important point about having tournaments. Mm. But unfortunately, it's the same senior players who keep on playing those tournaments every year. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're not having that new breed of players. Uh, second, that wh why are we at a back? Sir became a champion and all of those other people became a champion when we had no facilities. We have, I think, 70% of the resources now. Mm. And we're still not producing yeah, and results. There, and there wasn't any YouTube to learn the scales or probably Obviously, how to yes, strike yes. the ball and whatnot. But you know, um, just a few uh, weeks back, I guess, there were rugby players on our show. They were national rugby players. And they've been representing Pakistan across the, the country as well and inside, of course. And there was this one guy who actually, after the show, like a few weeks after the show, he got retired. He took retirement. Mm -hmm. He's very young. And he went on to pursue, uh, you know, being a chef because he loved doing that. And then on me asking, you know, why would you even consider being retired from whatever the sports that you were playing? He said, where do you see me going in the next few years with what I'm playing? Probably so, from one pole to another. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, but seriously. Yeah. So five or ten years down the lane, where do you see Pakistani youth going? Not only in cricket, let's see, because cricket is the only thing that keeps flourishing. We're proud yeah. of that, yes, but in, in other sports as well. Yep, it's, it's very important to understand this domain because they talked about the structure. Australia has one of the best structures in the yeah, world for sports. Yeah. Their pers Look, they, they've been world champion countless times. And the way they've been playing cricket is absolutely amazing but who would have known that a cricket player in australia is less celebrated hmm. but the person who is the actual hero over there is an australian football player yeah. so if you're wearing a jersey with an australian football hmm. logo they, they'll absolutely cherish you as their hero cricket is their second most favorite sport hmm. and they're still good at it and, and they're still good at it yeah. and if you look at the structure in in those uh, talk about ab de villiers who's i think one of the best players in this century he played hockey, he played rugby, and he played all <coughs> kinds of sports. Right. So you need to recognize what your domains are. Obviously. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for saying that. But very quickly before we wrap up the show, yeah. said so there's one simple request, and there's a simple request for you too, and you too as well. And that is, so whatever you've learned so far, yeah. all of that gist, In a take it out yes. and let it know to people. I mean, give it away as a gift to everybody who's tuned in today. Shadat, you see, like everybody. Whenever I, whenever, where I go for in functions, everybody asking me, hmm. why Pakistan is going down and down now? Yeah. While Kamar Zaman is here, Jahangir Khan is here, Jan Shir is here, exactly. and, with, and three legions are there, so hmm. there should be a champions, Absolutely. champion. <coughs> no doubt, Pakistan Air Force 
holding a position of um, federation mm. and they are doing a tremendous job. Mm. Air chief like Mujahid Anwar, he is the, uh, he is the president and senior vice president in Air <coughs> Marshal Shahid Alvi. Exactly. <coughs> they have made academies at, at Peshawar where uh, academies looking after, uh, I looked after myself and Jan Shear, we look after that academy in Peshawar, okay. Islamabad. I used to come uh, once in a while. In Karachi Academy, Jangi is looking after that. Hmm. So we are, Pakistan Federation is really working hard hmm. to bring this title back to Pakistan right, right. at grassroots level. So like you just said, we need, we need to work at grassroots level. Hmm. Exactly. What, is the, what is the problem with us that we are not working at grassroots level? Okay. Hmm. Like we are working in a squash now, okay. inshallah, I hope very soon you will see Inshallah. that Pakistan flag will be again, will be on the top Inshallah. of sky. Inshallah. Inshallah. So very <laughs> quickly, sir, very quickly. Uh, as I said, uh, the most important is uh, like planning uh, and hand over these planning to, uh, you know, Pakistan Sports Board. They should work at exactly. a grassroots level. They produced and then qualified coaches. You know, in, in World over. Yeah. The qualified coaches for the grassroots level, yeah. but in Pakistan, the qualified coaches you can only find for the, for the national, senior. national and senior. And, and at times so, you cannot even uh, find that too. So, as well. so, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, professional coaches, qualified coaches must be at a grassroots level. Exactly. Okay. Thank we you can very achieve much, results. Thank you, Thank you for saying that. Sir. Uh, I think if you're, if you're playing sports, then stop worrying about nepotism. Just go out there, do your hard work, and most importantly, I think it's for the parents to send their children outside. So don't exactly. worry only about the education. Yeah. Sports is an equally important thing in the world. Exactly, that's what it is. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us. It was lovely to have you. Absolutely. And for all those people who are out there, I've got a small gift for you people, and that is, for all this time, we never knew what sports stands for, but today we do, because it stands <laughs> for uh, Soldiers Portable On System Repair. So imagine that, you know, it's a repair system for wherever you may probably be in the world. Yeah. Go ahead and play a sport and you'll feel wonderful. Absolutely. But with that, we're wrapping up. Do write to us on our Facebook fan page, which is with the name of... Well, this morning. On Twitter. Well, this morning without a G. On Daily Motion and YouTube. Well, this morning. Well, this the morning. The fabulous repeat is going to be at... 5 past 11 in the night. Till the next time, one, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Thank you. Very much.